Okay, so it's uh, March 21st, and this is one of my ultra bee feeders. Actually, the closest one to the house. There's uh, others out in the bee yards. But this, being close to the house, tells me what is available for the bees provided by Mother Nature. So as you can see, we've taken video of bees working mistletoe. Here on the property, there's some cactus that are in bloom, some wild fleabane, aloe veras, the fall garden is still got blossoms uh, here and there, and the snapdragons are actually coming back for a second round. There's still some of the stock, but some of it did get little burnt in some of the cold weather that we had. Here is an area with a lot of wild mustard, also called London Rocket. And we have Verbenia. And beautiful fillery. Rosemary. broccoli flowers. Easter egg emu bush. And ice plants. Wild verbena. And lovely penstemons. And if you can tell, these poor butterflies have really, really battered wings. We have had such horrible, horrible winds. Okay, so this is one of the reasons why the bees are mostly on the man-made protein supplement. That's it. That's it for winter rain so far. These were our totals for January, February, and March for 2019, for 2020, and for 2021. So yeah, it's feast or famine out here. And this is the worst winter rains that we have seen in a long time. I mean, we started keeping our records, I think back in 2017, I think is when we really kept, started keeping them. Um, and I was just able to just go over with you really quickly from 2019 to date. And as you can tell, it's gonna be a really, really bad year, really bad spring. So if there's plenty for the bees to work that Mother Nature has provided, they're not going to feed on our ultra bee or man-made supplements. They prefer natural pollens. But the fact that they're on our feeders and I have all of that stuff that I just showed you blooming um, tells me that those plants are not that viable, which means that the winds that we've been experiencing um, are blowing the pollens right off of them um, and that they're dry because as I just showed you, we have a lack of rainfall. So I am going in and planting some things. Um, and so let's take a peek at what I just put in. Okay, so this is the peach tree that I got at a yard sale last year. And I kept it inside of my makeshift greenhouse that actually did not do very well um, in keeping the cold out. I had quite a few losses, but it is blooming. So any of the stone fruits that you put in are beneficial to pollinators because they make these gorgeous, gorgeous blossoms. Um, and so I'm hoping this is a good peach tree, um, but 
regardless, she's doing okay. So I just put her in as well as a Tuscan blue. And this is something that I got late in fall um, on the clearance rack at one of our suppliers. Um, as you can tell, this Tuscan blue rosemary is blooming, which the bees absolutely love. The more uh, rosemary I put in, the happier my bees are. Um, as you can see, there's more buds coming. Um, so I was just waiting for a good spot to put this. And I like doing things like a permaculture idea where you have one larger plant, which will be the peach tree um, with a bush, which will be the rosemary. And then I'll probably eventually bring in some other low flowers like um, some wildflowers or some ice plants like I did over here. Okay, so this looks really, really, really sad. As I was saying, the uh, greenhouse did not stop things from getting burnt from the cold. Um, so this is a pineapple guava um, that you can tell is still alive. I am not sure if that one is or not. I stuck it in the ground. I don't think it's alive. Um, I did the, do the green check where you scrape some of the um, dark um, the the woody stem and I've it's maybe alive not quite sure but one of the things I did do is I had this ice plant that I had a six pack of and again it was struggling in the greenhouse and but still alive so um, I put the six pack in the ground over here um, she just got watered as you can tell um, nice deep soaking so the um, ice plant will benefit from whenever I uh, water the pineapple guava and the bees will then benefit from the ice plant. Now this is a surprise color. I don't know what color it is. I already have a purple variety, a yellow variety, and a pink variety. So I'm hoping this is um, one of the other unique, maybe orange sunset looking ones. Um, so I'm really excited to see what these turn out to be. But again, these were a clearance sale six pack. Um, so. If they're whatever they are, I'll be happy with them. Okay, this is one that I'm really, really worried about. It's a stick, as you can tell. Um, it's a Fuyu persimmon. Dan and I absolutely love persimmons. We think that they are like the best, one of the best fruits, and you can grow them here. Um, I'm really worried that these might have, might have probably should have been put into uh, five gallon buckets and then put into the greenhouse instead of putting directly into the ground because we had so many cold freezing nights. Um, but I'm keeping her watered, hoping that she's going to snap back. Uh, we shall see. One thing I did do because a friend of mine tried this last year and they had a brilliant harvest, absolutely brilliant. Um, so what they did was they planted uh, direct sowed butternut squash seeds directly into the tree the brand new tree wells and they got like an 800 pound yield off of all of them that they did like that the total yield i don't know how many tree wells that they did but because i'm already watering this i am going to try it myself these i put four candy roaster seeds in uh candy roaster squash um but I did not buy those seeds. They were from a squash that Cheryl grew and allowed to stay on the plant until the vine died back. Um, and we're hoping that these squash seeds are gonna be viable because they are pretty expensive. You get like seven of them in a packet for like four bucks. So we're trying to figure out, um, hopefully, fingers crossed, that these are viable. Okay, um, there was one more persimmon tree, um, and in the base well of that one, I put in some Tohono O'odham squash seeds that I gathered out of a squash that we had purchased uh, from the San Javier Mission Farm last year and ate that wonderful squash. Um, so I just saved the seeds and hoping that those are also viable. Um, something that I picked up last year from um, Tohono Chul Park when I saw them um, is these really tiny starts of the white um, Texas olive um, bush. And Texas olive is a great pollinator plant. Um, it produces fruit, but not something that we eat. Um, it is only for the birds. 
And so, um, yeah, I had picked up four of them and they did get burnt in inside the greenhouse, but they are making their way back. I'm also hoping my cardan makes it. It is looking a little dark on the top. Totally, you know, it, it just did not work. I'm, I gotta do something different with the greenhouse. I have a dream, but I don't know if my dream will come true on that, but uh, I will work on it. But it is time to put the fig out. So um, I am going to go put this one in um, as my last thing to do today in the garden. Okay, I had said that that fig was the last one I was going to plant, but I was wrong because as I was walking past some of the other plants up higher in the garden, I noticed that I had this beautiful little mulberry plug that wants to go in and it says it's a dwarf black mulberry, zones five to 11. So um, yeah, let's see, look at the roots on this. It really, 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 really wants out. So I figured, well, yep, I better plant this one too. So uh, fruiting mulberry, again, very beneficial um, to the pollinators because in order to have fruit, you have to have a flower. This poor thing is so, I don't have a pocket knife on me. I would, it is so root bound. I'm just gonna try to pry it open a little bit, kind of let the roots know that it doesn't have to be bound up anymore. Kind of just kind of, kind of go freedom. You can have your freedom. Amazing, <laughs> wonderful root structure on this. This plant also had a bonus. If I am recognizing it correctly, there's a little teeny penstemon growing up on the side of it. <laughs> um, came to me from the nursery like that. Um, one thing I want to point out is that this uh, I got at Mesquite Valley Growers here in Tucson, um, and it came from Dave Wilson's nursery. This, I can't talk highly enough about any plants that you see with this tag. Um, you know it's good quality if it comes from this nursery. We have, um, that's where the uh, Fuyu persimmon stock came from too. Um, and the roots were just absolutely stunning. I had got some um, from a different bare root supplier the year before and the roots, had, there was just no comparison on the root quality.